Hey guys and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Ballistus Dreadnought from the new Leviathan box set that recently came out for 10th edition. In this video I'm not going to be fully going over every single process that I, uh, I painted on this because again I don't want to repeat uh, videos on this channel. Uh, in this one I'm going to be going more over the, the weathering and the prep and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see, obviously, if you want to check out a video that I did uh, on how to prep your minis, I um, did a video on on how to add like scratches and crackle paint and stuff like that, so feel free to go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. But in this one, I wanted to pay a little bit more attention and go a bit more in depth with the weather inside. Um, however, I will briefly touch on how I actually got this colour scheme just so you've got a base idea without having to click on all the other videos. So before we get into that, if you're not already, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And at the end of this Leviathan series, I have got a giveaway where I'm going to give away the entire fully painted box set of the Leviathan. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. So the colour recipe for my Ultramarines is a base coat primer of McCrag Blue, followed up with a highlight of Vallejo Light C blue and that's it there's no like adding shadows or anything like that i just literally thin it down and work my way around the miniature now with minis like this you want to be very careful with light placement like here i'm leaving like shadows in certain areas so just be aware if you want to know how to do that hold it under a lamp and start to work your way around your miniature but that's it it's just literally two colors that i use to uh get the uh, colour that I use on my ultramarines. Now for this section, obviously on the arm it did have like a stripe going down, I did quite like that so I wanted to put it on mine and I just taped that off uh, and started to slowly build up uh, that white uh, into a stripe. And as you can see in just a moment, uh, when I peel this off a little bit of it must have just lifted up and you can see down there at the bottom and we get a nice little nasty bit right near the top where the, the paint sort of leaked underneath it. I think that might be to do with how I thinned it too much. Um, but it's not an issue because we can cover this with battle damage later. But basically you want to work your way around your miniature and get everything base coated. All your vinyls, decals, all that sort of good stuff if you want to put them on. Uh, this metallics I used, Provacryl Dark Silver. Uh, but if you want to check out these in a little bit more detail, then you know head over to my previous Ultramarine Leviathan videos uh, and it'll sort of go over that for you. Uh, then I give the full thing a coat of satin varnish and once that's dried we move on to this phase which is a phase i love it's an enamel by uh, mig which is black wash it's oh, this stuff is amazing i always say that but i thin it in a little pot of mineral spirits and i just work my way around like this uh just you know getting and pin washing it i'm not going like i normally do with like streak and grime where i fully paint over it because it's going to darken it too much but i sort of give it a little pin wash of the black wash uh, as I'm working my way around it. The metallic parts, I literally just glaze over, fully just go over them. Don't even worry about pin washing that bit. I just go straight over them because I'm going to highlight up them up uh, a little bit later in another phase. Now, one last little tip I'm going to give you is when you've got something like this against the white or like your writing and stuff, is get the original colour McCrag Blue and go into you know like your vinyls and stuff and start adding some chipping and scratches and stuff like that before we move on to the next phase it's just an extra layer of detail that in the long run is going to look 10 times better now when it comes to weathering i like to do mine in a lot of different stages and each one of those stages all build up to create this unique look to your miniature now this phase has probably been spoke about a lot which i just quickly fly around um, the section which is sponge chipping i think it's just rhinox hide and i just quickly go around and add some smaller chips to certain areas and then what we're going to do after this is actually go back in with our brush and just make some areas uh, on some additional scratches a little bit more prominent uh, now the reason for this is obviously it all has a certain look but when it's combined with a brush it for me it just creates like a, a little bit more uniqueness towards it and all i've got is a really thin brush with some thin down paint so it comes off nice and easy i don't want too much on the brush at this stage you know if you want to get really fine with your scratches and stuff just make sure there's not much too much paint on your brush 
And then you'll see in just a second areas like this, where we've already added some sponge chipping, I've just tilted my brushes. I'm going to edge highlight and I'm just going across that line just to make it a little bit more prominent. And I'm using a mixture of, you know, like dragging that brush, scratching it and sort of like just tapping it here and there just to get like some more different you know like style of chips and stuff like that because sponge chipping can only take you so far and if you go over it and add these little extra steps in my eyes it just you know completely transforms the miniature make sure you know like not all your scratches are going in the same direction as you can see here, i'm more like dotting uh, the paint on uh, for the scratches and you know like these scratches mixed with uh, the blue ones again it's just that extra layer of weathering um, and you can see as it's quite pity on top that's because we've put the crackle paint on first which you know if you do a bit of prep work as well and I'm gonna keep saying it, it all comes and creates this unique look towards your uh, weathering sometimes what I like to do is here where it's not gone too deep where it's like blue coming off the the white I'll continue that uh, coming off the actual miniature like you can see here as though that scratch has gone a bit further down as though like something's hit it and it's lifted off a certain area but if you ever want to look at you know like what, what sort of weathering looks like just, just google some like like bashed up trucks or army trucks and stuff and you, you'll get some ideas of you know like looks and stuff for that now here's some more examples i just working my way around the miniature and by hand by brush just taking my time and adding these little chips in by hand so Areas like this where I don't want as much or too heavy of the chipping, I'll just go in with a hand brush and create those and, and do it myself. But what I tend to do when it comes to this stuff, I might, you know, like put the heavier chipping on towards the legs and the areas that won't be more chipped, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll avoid those areas with like the sponge chipping. Um, but I sort of section it off so I won't just do the full minion chip everywhere all over it and then go back to certain areas, I'll section it off. So as you can see on here, I've done the leg first, so I've done the leg, and then I'll come back up and work my way up the miniature. So I might just concentrate on this side panel. Uh, and that way, for me, you don't get bored of it and it's a little bit more enjoyable because this is a phase that I absolutely love. And it's just about taking your time and creating those chips and making sure that they're random, you know, there's not like a copy and paste as they call it when you do it with your chipping, is try and create randomness and look for areas like, I look at my miniatures when I'm creating them and I think, you know, what's the story with this miniature? What has this guy done? Um, like for some of the chippings that you've just seen on the arm as it fell over at some point and it sort of scratched up its elbows, it been running down against a wall and been blown against a wall, especially with like the bullets and stuff. And I sometimes, I've not done it on this one, but in previous ones I've added more bullet holes to like the areas that I'm painting now as though like people have been trying to kill it and shoot that certain area. And then when you get to like joints and stuff, like especially like kneecaps and you think, well, this miniature's definitely going to have been on its knees at some point. So there's going to be a little bit more heavier weather in there. And let's say if it's got some like cogs and wheels and stuff where its arms might have been, has it been bashing certain points of armor where it's been clipping it in, it in its battles and fights. And to me, this is a stage and a process that I go through as I'm putting this, like when I'm putting the miniatures together, I start to think, you know, what story do I want to create with this? What what do I want to come across? And every time I'm putting like dints and armor, each little section's got its own little unique story of what might have happened to the miniature or the or if it were real to that person or the, the dreadnought or the tank during that section as it had like a big section where it's been blown out. Um and there's a, a thing I'm doing with the Inferno Marines that came with it, which will probably be on the next video, is I put a lot of heavy chipping around their feet and stuff. Um, for me, it's as though like they've been burning stuff through woods, and as they've walked through them woods, you know, <laughs> that heat and stuff started to cause decay and bubbling on the paint of the armour. Um, so I think doing that as well can really help you out when it comes to the grim dark style and, you know, when you're weathering your, your miniatures. Now, moving on to the next layer slash stage of weathering, I've got friend Rizian Grey. Um, and just a quick side note, I know I'm telling you these colours, but this 
sort of staging can be ap applied to any color really if you've got like a red you obviously it'd be a darker red and then you use a lighter red to to do these highlights or so the same with yellow and stuff like that so it, it kind of cross you know you, when people say oh can you do the same thing but for blood angels and stuff it's the it's it's the technique really what I'm trying to teach you and the the theory and the philosophy around uh, the techniques that I'm using. Uh, but essentially, we're using this lighter color. Uh, we're going to add additional scratches here and there. Um, but for some of the he heavier chipped areas, again using the same techniques as as you can see, it's probably dried on my brush here at this point. Uh, but it does create like a, a lighter scratch. So experiment with as much paint or as less paint as you can. But I'd advise starting with less because you can always build up. And then I'm just underneath as all the lights catching it to make it look a little bit more 3D. If you look at chips on armor and paint and stuff, you always get this like little highlighted section underneath. And basically we're going to do the exact same thing, just underneath, and if you want an edge highlight, this is a really good way to stipple edge highlighting on, don't just do it as a straight line. I'm just working my way around all the chips that I've painted on, you can't really go wrong with this, you're just following what you've already done, um, and just highlighting each one of those sections. But again, this is a stage where you really want to take your time and people don't really put much into the weathering uh, or oh, a, a little technique there if you because it's watered down paint if you put too much on just dab it off with a or a games which you'll say with a wet brush you just soak up that paint <laughs> uh, or you could use your finger like i did but a lot of people don't put much into the weathering they sort of put more into the miniature but it's these little steps and these little stages what you're going to take your time on which is why i've not done a video on the full thing so i want to concentrate more on the techniques rather than repeating myself in videos and hopefully you'll be able to uh, get something from it but seriously take your time work your way around your miniature and you'll be surprised at how different and unique it can make that miniature look Now, moving on to another favourite phase of mine, which is adding the rust and the rust streaks. Now, I could sit here and talk about different enamels and oils to create rust streaks, but for me, there is no other champion than Dirty Down's Rust Effects. If you've not got this stuff, and I always say it, it's magic in a bottle. Um, but seriously, grab some of this stuff, because this, this is all I use now for my rust, uh, and my rust effects, um, because you can do so much with it. I am currently setting up a Patreon where I'm going to be doing a Dirty Downs Rust. I don't want to say masterclass, I don't like to uh, think I'm a master at anything. But really it's just going to be more of like an in-depth video showing you different hints, tips and techniques that you can do with this stuff. And as you can see what I'm doing here, because it is water soluble, it's, you don't need any special mineral spirits or anything like that. You can just add to it. Now... What I've done here, I've heavily, heavily watered it down. Obviously, you did originally see me add some chunks and stuff to the top of it. But ultimately, what I've done is watered it down, because you can water this down. With, but one thing I will advise is it does dry extremely fast. Like, we're, we're talking seconds to even maybe a little bit longer if you're lucky. Um, but what I do is I water it down uh, to like a wash consistency and I just, because I'm doing legs here, I'm not too fussed about how rough it looks. I'm sort of just slapping it on and going around. But when you water it down, because it sort of stains a little bit, you can build it up slowly and slowly and you get that much variation and difference in colour when you do that. The, it just adds to it and it, it'll go into those crevices and stuff which is what I did on the metallic so for the, for the entire metallics I think I get it a dry brush uh, run fang steel but then I went around the entire thing with really heavily watered down uh, dirty downs rust and, and just let it go into those crevices also with the dirty downs rust you do get like some chunky bits I like to use them for the heavily rusted areas and if you want to streak it or water it down you just get your water on your brush and just streak it down and sometimes you can also do it like a dry brushing technique so when it's dry a little bit i just flick it up and down miniature uh, and add that to it as well now one final step which is what i'm doing here you can even use water but i've also got some of the new yellow dirty downs rust uh, the original is probably the best um because the, the the yellow's a little bit too strong but i've just got a little bit of yellow just to get that tiny little bit more variation into the into the uh, color and i'm just adding it into certain sections just to create a bit of variation onto the rust 
and that's pretty much it so as you can see all the different variation i did i think i got some like contrast paints and put some splatter on it and pigment powders and stuff again this is dependent on how much weathering that you do want to add to your mini so i hope you have found this a little bit more of an in-depth one on some weathering a little bit more informative i didn't want to keep repeating videos of, oh this is how i painted this is how i do it this is this color this is that color um you know i think ultimately it is the techniques that are important when uh painting up your miniatures and all the videos if you want like the crackle paint and stuff if you want to check them out i'll leave all links to those in the description below so i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have massive help out if you give me a thumbs up on this video and get this video out there share it with your friends share it on instagram um and remember if you want to win these then make sure you hit that subscribe button because the competition is going to come up very soon. And until next time, guys, massive thanks again for watching this, and I'll catch you in my next video.